Welcome to the Commissioner's Report, where today we'll be joined by Commissioners George Lindsay and Melanie Bell. First up is Commissioner Lindsay. Welcome to the program. Good morning, glad to be here. Back in November of 2012, Polk County residents voted favorably for a referendum to allow the Board of County Commissioners to provide economic development ad valorem tax abatements to qualifying new businesses and to expanding companies uh, for a prescribed period of time based on job creation and new capital investment in our community. Why do you think, Commissioner, our voters uh, in Polk County were behind this new economic development tool? Well, the Commission at the time convinced the community that we were at a competitive disadvantage with our mm -hmm. friends and surrounding counties. Uh, the larger counties already had some kind of a tax abatement program, and in order for us to remain competitive, it was necessary to have this additional tool in our toolbox to help attract uh, business and therefore jobs to the community. And Commissioner, you and your colleagues passed this ordinance last May, allowing for this program to move forward after you received well thought out guidelines from economic developers from throughout Polk County and scrutiny from the county attorney's office. It was necessary to make sure this program worked. And so we used the advantage to, to see what was working in other counties. Yes, sir. Uh, we talked to our economic development professionals locally with Lakeland Economic Development Council, Central Florida, Haines City, to have their input to make sure it was a viable tool and that it would work. So we brought all those pieces together and then we had our county attorney draft the ordinance that was necessary to implement the program. Uh, the tax abatement uh, program commissioner has been very successful in Polk County by anybody's measure. Uh, to date, I think we've approved 12 of these deals. Can you please provide us an overview of some of the projects that the Board of County Commissioners has approved? Well, the one that's probably get the most attention, of course, is Amazon. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly that is, um, you know, huge to our county. They put in one million square feet out on County Line Road and they've leased an additional 300,000 square feet over on 27 just north of I-4. The program that we adopted for Amazon for their new warehouse on uh, County Line Road gives them a 75 percent reduction in their ad valorem taxes for a 10-year period. Now, they'll employ over 500 people and they've installed a state-of-the-art oh, yeah. uh, distribution system they have outstanding benefits for their employees, including paid college tuition, even if the, the employee slash student wants to study something other than logistics related to Amazon. Um, so they will be a great corporate partner. You know, it's interesting to note, even though we granted a significant tax uh, abatement, I looked it up, that particular piece of property had been green belted for as long as Polk County has been in existence, 150 plus years. The most that piece of property ever paid in, in ad valorem taxes over the years past was $193. Wow. So yeah. that's a huge contribution, a, a decision that any businessman would, would make the same decision. You know, at the top of the program, Commissioner, you alluded to the other counties around us, the major counties, have tax abatement programs. I believe Amazon got a similar deal from Hillsborough County for the second very large warehouse they put uh, in the Ruskin area. They did. Uh, and I'm proud for our Hillsboro folks, but I'm more proud for our Polk folks that got two Amazon facilities. Uh, thanks, Commissioner, for outlining that uh, special tax abatement award. Now, other companies receiving tax abatements from the Board of County Commissioners in public hearings, including the Brew Hub, Sterry Pack International, Pepperidge Farms, Sofidel America, Innovated Industrial Services, DS Services, Oakley Transport, Southern Wine and Spirits, and, uh, and then the latest one is Metromont, which makes pre-stressed concrete beams uh, south of Bartow. The program then has been very popular. Can it be too popular? Well, that's the good news, bad news. <laughs> the, the good news is we are attracting it. Uh, we've also set in some uh, stopgap measures to make sure that we, we don't overdo it. Uh, the board has put a cap on two million dollars a year of tax abatement, but if the program is having this success and drawing new business and encouraging local businesses to expand, that, that very much is a good thing. 
Yeah, I think at least half the ones that you all have awarded have been the existing companies expanding, so that's, that's extra nice. Uh, those are the ones that I am most proud of. Yes, sir. What types of businesses may apply for tax abatement? Well, of course, it is new and expanded businesses, okay. so that's uh, the first test. Uh, but the, some of the things that we look at on the new businesses, adding 10 full-time new employees mm -hmm. uh, in industrial or manufacturing, a minimum of 25 employees, if it's more of an office setting, yes, sir. And, and creating new, new jobs, uh, special attention to enterprise zones that are identified uh, geographically and also brownfield areas. Brownfields are, are more uh, uh, mitigated areas that may have environmental concerns or an abandoned facility that's, that's uh, quite distracting from the community. Now, you know, we mentioned the uh, Amazon was a 75% reduction for 10 years, but the other end of the spectrum could be uh, as little as 25% uh, for three years. And that is a, a report card grading system that the professionals go through in deciding which, what they would qualify for. So it is a sliding scale based on the contribution that they make as far as capital improvements, adding to the tax base, adding to jobs, uh, tangible personal property improvements. So uh, it, the results are customized to the, to the uh, commitment the applicant made. You've already noted that existing companies can benefit from uh, this incentive uh, as well as the new guys coming in. Are there any special requirements, requirements or nuances to the ad valorem tax abatement program? Uh, the standards are both for new businesses or expanding businesses, but uh, the, the standards are limited to a 10-year relief, Okay. Uh, applies only to the taxes that are levied by the Board of County Commissioners. Yes, sir. Does not affect school board, does not affect municipalities, uh, the water management district, or any of the other things you see on your trim notice, only that part that is levied by the Board of County Commissioners. How does the tax abatement process work? Well, an applicant would meet with their economic professional, whether it's Lakeland okay. Economic Development or Central Florida or Haines City or any of the mm -hmm. Winter Haven, any of the economic development professionals and complete a one-page application. Yes, uh, if, if that sponsoring agency then agrees to move the thing forward, then the next step is visiting with our property appraiser, Marsha Fox. Right. She goes through the process of uh, calculating the, uh, the actual economic impact of uh, the tax abatement, and that made part of the, the report. Then the uh, county attorney's office actually uh, customizes an ordinance specifically for that client on those circumstances and those uh, reliefs that are given. Uh, that is then um, presented to the county commission for their consideration and adoption. That's great. And what are some of the main criteria that are used to award these tax abatements? It gets back to economics, dollars okay. and cents. How many new net jobs, okay. not expanded existing jobs, but new net jobs are being added. The average annual wage, we want to raise the average wage in Polk County, so um, there's, there's room in the full spectrum of, of moving that up. The amount of capital investment, <coughs> not only the building itself, but the equipment and the hardware, the tangible personal property that goes inside the building, yes, sir. which is all part of the tax base. We also look at the environmental impacts. We want to make sure that this is a positive influence on Polk County and not to be a dis distractor. But one of the areas that I'm particularly uh, proud of is that we encourage them to use local trades, local employees during the construction process, not just the, the hiring process at the end, and use uh, local suppliers for materials. And what safeguards and oversight are employed to protect the public's interest in these tax abatements? Well, this is not a once and done program, which uh, has plagued some other jurisdictions in other states where substantial uh, concessions have been made and in a short period they evaporate. Uh, this is an annual review, even on a 10-year program, is it is, allows for up to 10 years. And the applicant uh, has to report annually uh, to your office. Uh, then you or your agent makes a, a site visit annually. Yes, 
and as long as they're complying with what they represent they will do, the tax abatement will continue for the, for the next year. <coughs> if, there's, if there is a change in ownership, uh, they, they must give notice requirements, and if the new owner, that's fine if a new owner is going to continue the early representations. If the owner is going to go off in a different direction, that would put the, the uh, tax abatement at risk. Um, so it's, it is um, closely monitored and uh, make sure that they, they met the representation on new hires, salaries, and the capital commitment. Let's go over a couple of the projects real quickly um, uh, that, that you're probably aware of, obviously. The Brew Hub. This was the first one that we did. They located out at the Lakeland Interstate Commerce Park, I think owned by Wesley Beck. Mm -hmm. Brand new business to uh, Lakeland, kind of a new business model. Uh, it was a new business model and, you know, some, some guys had a great idea. I think they were formerly with uh, Anheuser Bush. Yes, sir. And uh, I thought there may be a niche market for uh, smaller micro brewers. And so uh, they put together a business plan, uh, raised the capital, and uh, brought forth their representation. And we were pleased to support it. And as long as they're performing, we'll, uh, we'll be partners with them in that regard. You know, one of the long time uh, Polk County businesses that has been a, um, awarded one of these tax abatements is Pepperidge Farm out in Lakeland. I remember when they located out there in the 1986 time frame, that was a key landmark business and kind of set the tone for the Lakeland Economic Development Council and the Central Florida Development Council to kind of say, look what we got and there's room for others. That, that was a, a landmark decision. You know, Pepperidge Farms is part of a big corporate organization, a yes, uh, mega, and they could have gone anywhere in the country, in the world. Uh, they chose uh, our market, and they have since uh, seen the, the, the merits of that decision. And as they have opportunities for expand, again, they could go into other markets. And they have chosen to continue to expand here in Polk County. Uh, another big um, existing company expansion happened with Southern Wine. I believe that they're doing a... Um, it's, it's a $55 million expansion. They're adding 440,000 square feet to their facility in West Lakeland. Uh, they're going to be adding 100 jobs. That's another great project. It, it really is. And many of these companies, uh, they dip their toe in the water to mm -hmm. test the market, to test Polk County, to test their market influence in this part of the, the state. Uh, and once they're here a while, they realize that they've made a wise decision and, and choose to expand. You know. As, as our role in government, we, we can't make jobs in the private sector, but we can create an environment that entices jobs to come here and, and put forth a favorable business environment. And once they come, uh, when there's an opportunity to expand, they often do. Well, thank you, Commissioner, for being on the program today and for highlighting a significant new initiative in the county's toolbox for attracting new businesses and for rewarding existing businesses who are expanding. Now please stay tuned to the Commissioner's Report where next up we'll have Commissioner Melody Bell talking to us about a new program and process for Polk County. Thank you. What's in a number? Take the number 65. That's how many members were in the House of Representatives in the very first Congress. And each of those 65 was responsible to only 30,000 voters back home. Today, the House of Representatives is made up of 435 members, each of whom has to represent the interests of more than 650,000 people. That means that today's members of Congress have to work much harder to reach their constituents. Of course, when there's so many of us, it's difficult for them to hear what we have to say. That makes citizen participation all the more important. One way to make sure you're heard is to join a group that shares a common interest or goal. That way, many voices become one, and that is hard to ignore. Welcome back to this segment of the Commissioner's Report, where we're gonna be talking about alignment, not the magical alignment of the planets or the more practical alignment of your car's tires, but the alignment of a community. Joining us now is Commissioner Melanie Bell. Welcome to the program. 
Thank you. Glad to be here today. Commissioner, not long ago, you traveled to Nashville, Tennessee to learn more about an innovative education program called Alignment Nashville. What did you learn in Nashville when you traveled there? Well, a lot of people ask why a county commissioner get involved in education. And it's very important that we do collaborate together with the school board and the uh, Polk County Commission to talk about education. So I was invited out by the school board to go to Nashville to look at their alignment piece that they had. And actually what happened was 10 years ago, the city of Nashville was having their school board taken away from them by the, by the state because of failing uh, students. Their test scores were very low. And so business leaders in that community got together and decided we're not going to have this. And so they uh, came up with an advisory council called Alignment Nashville and took the school board actually back from the state and said we're going to run it and we're going to run this like a business. We need high, higher ed kids graduating here. And over the 10 years, if you go back and look at their stats, my goodness, they have like increased 25% of graduating uh, students. Phenomenal there. result. Phenomenal, yes. yes. But uh, you know, what does education have to do with economic development? A whole lot. So going out there and looking at their program, you know, and this was two years ago, it's like, wow, this is interesting because what spun out of their program was career academies, which we already have career academies here in the county. But most important, we need a strategic plan. Where do we get from preschool to graduation rate and how do we offer the workforce for high wage, high skill jobs when we have companies knocking on our door? Well, obviously it worked in Nashville. Is what they did in Nashville transferable to Polk County? Well, we're not in Nashville. Yes. They have 93,000 students, about the same students that we yeah, have here. Yeah. But the demographics, you know, we're 2,000 square miles and there's their dense population is very dense. So mm -hmm. uh, we are not that. but. I believe we can make it work with the collaboration of all the organizations coming together. And you say, well, what, what is this? What is um, a strategic plan? Well, the strategic plan is put out by the school board. And uh, how are we going to get you know, these uh, kids graduating from high school, wanting to go on with their career, college, technical school? So in my out and abouts in the county, I've realized that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, vice versa. We're giving all this funding, not just county agencies, but nonprofit uh, agencies are given funding. But do they know what they're doing? Do we have one plan to get to where we need to be? So with this strategic plan and, and uh, as you know, birthing it has been very hard and, and we're going to bring it up under the uh, Pope Vision. Uh, which is very important, I think, with Sarah Roberts leading this initiative is uh, just a key piece here. But uh, with this uh, plan, the strategic plan, uh, you won't get you won't get funding. You won't be if you're not on the same track. And, and we've needed this a long time ago. So this is exciting for Polk County. So the then what I'm hearing is the school board doesn't stand alone. It has Correct. partners. Who are the major partners? Well, the uh, superintendent, okay. uh, Catherine Leroy, and okay. then the other partner is Jim Freeman, our county okay, manager. Uh, we have uh, come together, and I don't know if there's ever been a collaboration like this in many, many years that uh, we've seen the importance. You know, when a business is coming to the county, you know, they're knocking on the county commissioner's doors. They're wanting tax abatements. They're, mm -hmm. they're wanting to set a business up. But, you know, there's two questions out of their mouth. Do you have the workforce for us for this high-wage, high-skilled job? What and then what are you going to do for us? So you know, the question back to them is, what are you going to do for the school board? You know, how are you going to partner with us? And, and we need business actually to be involved in this initiative. You're, you hit the nail right on the head, Commissioner. The bottom line in business today is education. education. So, uh, let's talk about Polk Vision. A group of community leaders and businesses came together in what 2004 and they wanted to take our county forward, okay? And you were part of that and varying other groups. Um, what is your sense of, of Polk Vision and how has it grown over the, over the oh last goodness. decade? Yeah. Well, they use the whole county as community mm -hmm. groups, as you said, and I was involved in that mm -hmm. as uh, when I was actually serving mayor at that time in Fort Meade, and they included not only the north side, but the south side, east, west of the county to uh, bring everybody together 
And I think the main thing that came out of that was we're going to work together as one county, one Polk, Polk vision, and have a vision to, to uh, complete our task. But the, their task force that came out of it, they're different. Um, areas was you know government task force oh infrastructure education so you know what a great place to to bring this alignment piece into the Polk vision you know and thank you for that background commissioner this leads us now to Polk vision's work with the alignment process you know where are they today in this well they their board has actually stepped up and taken a vote of confidence that they will be they will be the leader in this uh, because of the education piece and economic development piece of this so Sarah Roberts has okay. um, taken it on as the executive director and uh, so out of that there's going to be different segments that they will be able to bring their board members there to serve on each board to make sure this alignment piece goes forward. That's exciting. Uh, I did some research and it's it and I read where the alignment communities commit to eight specific actions over time. Do you mind even if you have to read those those action steps to us please no I mean, this is exciting so okay. I'd be happy to do that Thank you. Um, the first one was develop a community-wide shared vision purpose and outcomes uh, second is intentional alignment of existing community resources prior to addition of new resources and then operate based on shared community principles which we already have mm -hmm. that in place utilize an effective organizational structure utilize effective outcomes driven processes for designing solutions so that's uh, sort of like a uh, accountability piece there okay. engage the broader community through the use of uh, invitations to participate in the process and mm -hmm. throughout the uh, this process you're going to be hearing ITPs invitation to participate <laughs> mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of acronyms but keep that in mind that uh, you know Nashville's coming down and they're going to be bringing uh, training us on, you know, boots on the ground. Okay. This is where you, this is where you get. And then the last one: we develop effective and efficient communication and collaboration systems and use of alignment technology portal. And that's really probably the most important that we're going to be able to have that portal. So two of the main players in this important process are the school board and the Polk County Board of County Commissioners. I believe the school board has already committed some funds yes, they to, have the, to the project. Funds okay. and also office space for us. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, you know, once that piece has already you know, been put in, the piece of the puzzle, the main puzzle, now we've gone out to community partners, stakeholders, not just the funding. We mm -hmm. want skin in the game. We want business leaders to step up and say, this is how we run our business. This is so important for education today. Okay align yourself with us so so we're wanting them to be active board members in the process so the uh, what do you think the Commission's role is going to be in the, I, you know I can well, see where the school board may be coming from and they're invested and as you say they have skin in the game mm -hmm. what are we going to do from well, the Board of County the Commissioners, County commissioners okay. have stepped up uh, my other four league four colleagues I'm mm -hmm. sorry on the That's Commission right. has been very proactive to get this off the ground along with the CFDC, they, they have been behind this uh, initiative also. But the commissioners are, we want accountability. If we're spending taxpayers' money, we want the piece that says, okay, this is working. And it's gonna take three years for us to you know, see where we're at in three years. We're gonna give it a three-year timeline there to come back and say, okay, where are we at? Where are we with test scores? Where are we with graduation rate? Oh, that's fantastic. And it, this is such an exciting program, and it's had some success, and not only in Nashville, but in some other cities. Can you take parts of this process and put them into other areas that are important to the citizens, like economic development, infrastructure, quality of life, those kind of things? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, one thing that I did learn when I went to Nashville is, um, and the main thing I brought back was quit pointing fingers. Was saying it's the school board's responsibility to educate our children only or it's the county's responsibility it's all of our responsibility and one thing that they talked about was one of their initiatives was hungry children oh, yeah. you know we how can a child learn if he goes to school or she goes to school hungry in the morning time so one of their programs was the uh, agricultural department partnered with the schools they're growing the vegetables things to take over to the schools and they're feeding the children in the morning time so there's yeah. so many partners involved and, and you mentioned 
you know, economic development. Uh, as a county commissioner, you know, we're wanting to entice businesses to come here. They need an employee base to hire from. We have businesses every day knocking on our door saying we, we would love to Polk, come to Polk County and work. You've got a, a low tax base structure here. You've got, you know, your uh, tax abatements out there. But do you have the workforce for us? And it's so important on the education piece. Yeah, you're, you're certainly right there because after the incentives are come and gone, they're here and what's their number one expense? And what's their number one important thing? Like the Board of County Commissioners are employees. Absolutely. And so you got to have that, the base. You know, you touched a little bit. I want to go back, Commissioner, on, on the hunger. Um, I'm involved with the Hunger Council mm -hmm. and with the lead hunger from Polk Vision. And to me, if, if I saw a school board member, what I would tell them, keep on putting money to feed our children. And I know the school board recently has rolled out a program uh, in many of our schools where there is free lunch and free breakfast for all the students in the school so there's no stigma to those that maybe can't afford uh, lunch or don't have breakfast at home and they come to school nervous and hungry and anxious and they can't concentrate. So what a wonderful program this is to feed uh, the, the children that, that are hungry and we need to take care of the little ones. Absolutely. I know, I know you have a big heart. Tell us a little bit, uh, you've been a champion of education and I know you go to the schools. Tell us a little, give us a little background of your involvement with the, with the schools in Polk County. Oh, I have two yeah. daughters yes, that graduated from Polk County Schools here. And, <laughs> yes. yes. And they, both of them done very well. In fact, my youngest just graduated from college. Congratulations. So we're yeah. excited about that. But I volunteer once a week. I do Reading Pals at yes, Lewis Elementary in Fort Meade. And uh, Reading Pals, I take kindergartners. Uh, there's four little kindergartners. And we do it at 8 o'clock every Monday morning. I take two kindergartners for 30 minutes and the other two for the next 30 minutes and I read to them every Monday. There's another uh, reading pal that comes in on Tuesday or Wednesday that is repetition. These are the children that's never had a book read to them before. These that's are sad. high risk yeah. kids that, um, that you're not only reading to them and getting them interested in, in education and excited but you're also developing a relationship with them. And you're, last year I had the best four little children. I just, when it was time for the school year to end, I didn't want, to, want them to leave. But you know, these children just need a little push and a little love, just, just knowing that an adult loves for them and cares for them. Well, bless you, uh, Commissioner Bell, for not only being a servant of the people, but for being a great mom and um, supporting all the children in Polk County. And thank you for being on the program today and talking about this new process called alignment mm -hmm. and the value of education in our workforce. Well, it's exciting. It's hard to wrap your brain around it because there's so many moving parts here. But I think in three years when we look back on this and say, wow, look what this alignment piece has done for the education piece here in Polk County. I think everybody will be excited. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is your host, Jim DeGennaro, uh, reminding you to come back with us next month where we'll hear from two more county commissioners talking about programs and policies that are important to our 200, and, excuse me, 626,000 residents in Polk County. Until then, please take care and enjoy this beautiful community we call home.